Hello and welcome to another training video. Now today's video is going to be looking at Microsoft Project and a problem that's been around in Project for years and it's to do with adding exceptions into the working time or the calendar within Excel. Now what do I mean by that? Well let's take a look. So if I open up Project here um, what you'll see is that on the project ribbon so in other words to do with the whole of the project we have a calendar and this is our standard project calendar. Now it's broken down at the moment so that Monday to Friday are working days. Um, but of course if we just pop down here to December, the 25th of December is a Friday. Now unless I made that an exception, it would be a working day. Now we're not going to work on that day because it's Christmas Day. So fortunately most people have that as a bank holiday. So what I could do is come down here where the tab is exceptions, make sure I've selected the 25th of December and I could type in Christmas and now Christmas Day has gone in as an exception. Now it pre-populated the start and finish because I had that date already selected. Now what you've got to be careful of is that you don't put in Christmas holes and then put that in as a bracket to date which also includes Christmas. Now what I mean by that is if I say my Christmas holes start on the 21st and run through until the 27th, I'm not going to be allowed to do that. Now the reason is because it conflicts with number one which is Christmas. What that means is I've referred to the same date in more than one place. I have an overlap here and I cannot do that. I can only refer to each day once. So I'm going to uh, just remove these. It's not going to let me actually delete it. So what I need to do is I need to change this date first of all. This can also be an absolute pain. So I need to change that date first of all. So there is now no overlap. And now I can go ahead and delete them. I can't delete them until I fix the problem. So as soon as I've created the problem, I need to fix the problem before I can even delete that row of data. Now this is not the issue that I want to talk about. The issue I want to talk about is actually if I'm trying to pre-populate something like a template with, for example, all of these public holidays, which might run on for you know many, many holidays, um, and I've got here a list for the next 10 years of England and Wales bank holidays, I can't copy and paste it into project. Well, that's not strictly true because what I can do is I can copy and paste, but it doesn't go into the relevant fields in project. So let's imagine I copy some stuff there. When I go back to project, if I try to paste, what it's pasting in is just the top line and it's pasting it in all as text with tab delimiters into my text name. It's not pasting into start and finish as well. So I clearly don't want to do that. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run some code. So I've made sure there's no holidays in there at all. I'm going to run some code and if I just do Alt F11 this will bring up the code window and this is the code that's going to get all of those holidays individually row by row from the Excel file and add them as individual holidays with the correct start and finish dates. Now I'll talk you through the code in a minute. Let's first of all have a look at it in action. So my Excel spreadsheet has lots and lots of individual holidays on there, starting with New Year 2021, which is the 1st of January. Now I'm going to close this Excel file down. And the reason is because the code is going to ask me which Excel file I want to open. What you do need to do is you do need to have your file pre-saved somewhere on your machine. You also need to have your headers in the top row and the headers should be name, start, finish. Now it doesn't matter what they're actually called, but those should be the content for the three columns and don't have any empty uh, rows within the data either because otherwise 
the code will run down to the first empty row and it will stop there. So I've actually added a button onto my project so it will run. I click on the button there, it's running through the code, it's now going to ask me where is the file that I want to open and I will point it to the Excel file that I've got on my desktop. So I click on desktop, I'm going to go to my Excel file called holidays and I click open. And now what it's doing is it's opening that file, looping through and adding in all of those holidays. So when I go into change working time now, you'll see that I actually have a list of all of my bank holidays added in for the next 10 years. Okay, trust me, that's a lot of copying and pasting if you're doing them all manually. Now, I'm going to select and delete all of these. Eventually, when it responds. And the reason I'm deleting them all is so that I don't overwrite any when I actually execute the code again. So this time, what we're going to do, instead of clicking on the button, we're going to actually step through the code and I will explain what the code is. Now, the, it looks like quite a lot of code, but actually everything in green is just text explanations of what the actual code itself does. So these are comments just to help you understand the code. And if you want a copy of this, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be more than happy to email it across to you. So let me know an email address and I'll send it to you. Now, these first three lines here, all they actually do is define some things, some variables that I'm going to be using, and these are going to be objects. So I'm dimensioning them as objects. And now for the first of them, object Excel, I'm setting it to be the Excel application. So this is the program Excel. Whenever I want to refer to it, I call it object Excel. Now, this Excel application requires its own reference library. So what we need to do before you ever run this code, you only need to do this once, you need to enable the Microsoft Excel reference library. Now you get to that from tools, references, and Microsoft Excel object library. Now the reason we have to do that is because some of the things that I'm doing, I'm going to refer to using Excel VBA rather than project VBA, but I'm in project. So I need to have that library open so I can actually give the machine some commands and it will understand the commands. So I've defined OBJ Excel as my application Excel. And now I'm saying my file, which is a variable, within the Excel application, get open file name. So this is the first of my lines of Excel VBA code, even though I'm in project. Now, what that does is it opens a dialog box, which is a file browser, and lets the user go and pick their Excel file, and it stores the path for that file, the path and name in the variable my file. Next, I'm going to set OBJ workbook as, well, guess what? That particular file, which I'm going to open. What I'm then doing is I'm setting my OBJ worksheet, or WS, as the very first worksheet in that workbook that I've just opened. Now, when you open another file, so a file from an external reference library, that file by default is hidden. So you can make it visible, make the Excel object visible, but you don't have to. I could make it visible for testing, just to make sure that I switch screens and see what's happening in Excel, but you don't have to. And you certainly don't need that visible when you're actually running the code. Now what we have is we're going into the object worksheet and we're saying select A1 on that sheet. Now it will probably already be selected, but there's no guarantee of it, so I'm forcing it to be selected. What I'm then doing is I'm looking at the range of cells which are touching A1, which gives me a whole range of contiguous cells, and that should be the three columns with all of my holidays in there. I'm going to count how many rows there are, and I'm going to load that into a variable called LR, last row. Now, my last row is actually that number 
which is how many rows I've got in there, because I'm starting at A1. So I'm starting in row one, working my way down, but I don't have that many holidays. I've only got that many minus one, because that last row also includes the header row. Now I'm looping through from one to last row minus one to take account of the header row. And for each row within my Excel, I'm reading three things and loading them into variables. So I'm loading the very first column into my name, the second into my start, and the third into my finish. And I'm going to do this for each row as I loop through. So now what I'm going to do here, and this is the first line of actual project VBA rather than Excel VBA, within my active project, I'm going to look at my base calendars and base calendar standard. I'm going to add an exception. Type 1 is a standard exception. In other words, it makes it from working into non-working. And I'm going to use this start as my start, finish as my finish, and name as my name. And then I loop through as many times as I need to. And then finally close the workbook itself. Now, where is this code actually saved? Well, it's saved in something called global. So global MPT, which is a hidden project file that's open all the time when you're running Microsoft Project, just like the um, personal workbook that's open when you open Excel. And this is a good place to store code. The reason this is a good place to store code is it means I can run that code on any project file that I have open. So it doesn't matter which project file the code is saved in. I don't have to run it just on that project file. Like I say, I can run it on any project file I've got open. So here we are with a new project, so project one. If I go into change working time, you'll see that there are no exceptions in there so far. <coughs> I'm just going to say run my code. So I click the button there to run the code. It should ask me where is the Excel file. I'm going to say it's on my desktop. It's called holidays <coughs> and I click open. It runs through the code. Now when I go into change working time, I will be able to see all of those exceptions for the next 10 years. All those holidays have now been populated. Just to demonstrate that it can be run on any project file, I'm do control N. This is now a new project file. This is now project two. I'm going to hit my button again. And this will again populate all the holidays for the next 10 years. As soon as it's finished running, I can click on change working time again. And I'll see that this also has 10 years worth of holidays written in there. OK, uh, the code itself is fairly easy to understand. I hope you guys have found this useful. Um, if you do want a copy of this code, just put a comment down below and I will be happy to email it across to you. And I hope you have found it useful. And as always, thank you for listening.